Right, so as you've likely guessed from the title, the channel has its first series by popular request. Welcome to the first Shit Weasel of the Week. To win this most prestigious title, they have to be a public figure or at least have appeared on a mainstream TV network or mainstream newspaper, for example, but not limited to politicians, reporters, media hags and any audience member who thought it was a good idea to stand up and spout nonsense in the name of whatever ideology they follow. This will generally focus on the mainstream media in the UK, or things that appear in the UK mainstream media that could be an international story highlighted over here. But I will do some American content if you guys want me to, so you'll have to let me know. Now let's take a look at the nominees for this week. Our first nominee for Shit Weasel of the Week is the wife of boxer Amir Khan, Fariel Makdoom. Even though this is the Trump UK edition, she deserves a special nomination. We have to remember that this complete airhead thought it would be a good idea to go on the Good Morning Britain show stating that she thinks stay-at-home mums should be paid £100,000 a year. More, that's more than a doctor or a lawyer. Yes, this idiot actually went on TV and said she thinks the government should pay her £100,000 a year to look after her kids and clean her luxury mansion, which is technically two houses, a four-bedroom and a two-bedroom on a massive piece of land. But the thing that makes her a worthy contender for the title of Shit Weasel of the Week is her attempt to make out like she has struggled to bring up her kids because looking after them while doing the cleaning is too much work for her to do without a £100,000 a year wage. The host has to point out that she is stinking rich since her husband is worth a total of over £20 million, forcing her to admit that she has cooks and cleaners. Let's watch some of her highlights for this week. Well, if you are, have you left them a salary to look after the kids and the household, as well as pocket money for fun things. Well, that's Treat the thought, yourself. yeah, of one parent who starts an online debate after saying she deserved a monthly wage. So, is she right? Well, we're joined now by mother of two, Fariel Makdoum, who says she is the CEO of her house and deserves a wage alongside mum of one, Amal Baraba, who thinks the love you get from your children is payment enough. Uh, Fariel, let's start with you. So you believe that actually a salary of some sort, as well as some extra money, not just to run the house, but for you to enjoy yourself, is the least you deserve. I think we're saving so much cost because the government would be subsidizing it anyway. Um, us staying home, we're working like 90 hours a week, you know, and we're not just looking after our children, but the entire house, like a CEO of the house, that's not getting paid. So it's like laundry, cooking, cleaning, looking after your children. And I think that, you know, when you put it all together, we should get paid more than like a surgeon or a lawyer. It adds up to 100K a year, more than that. So more than a surgeon or a lawyer. It's not just the child you're bringing up. I feel like if I just had to bring up my child and I didn't have all the other burdens, it would have been a bit easier. Yeah, but I the get... fact that I'm doing every single chore and I know some people But that... is that a debate you should take up with your husband? Is that That's what my next point was. Yeah. Why has got to be government? I'm doing everything here. Yeah, but see, um... I'm lucky enough to get help and get a cleaner and get a cook. But what about some mothers I know, well, some of my friends can't afford to work. They have to leave work to look after their children because childcare is more expensive and their husbands don't have the, that extra money to give their wives, you mm. know? Um, and I feel like we're helping the economy by sitting home and doing all the work that we would be getting from, you know, the government. So mm -hmm. that's my Haven't you work again and have someone look after your child. Yeah, and I, I understand um, that. But I think you, you also don't get appreciated, you know, you're doing all this. And if someone was to give you that bit of appreciation by giving you money to go out, to enjoy a bit and have that time to yourself for your, like you go into depression if you're constantly just home looking after your children, doing all the chores with yeah. no help. Yeah, because it's quite you know? isolated. Uh, uh, isn't, yeah. that, isn't that a personal thing? Isn't that exactly. a family thing? Isn't that something you work out with Michaela your says partner? it's called housekeeping. Women's had it for years. My mum had it, my nan had it, my husband gave it to me when mine were little. Amanda says my partner pays me 200 pounds a week to stay at home. It's definitely easier to go to work, she says of your, your mm. household. I think it's like, if your partner's working, that's your money. It's both of your money. I You're not going to stop crazy spending. I think you should totally get paid. You're the CEO of the house. You're looking after house bills, cooking, cleaning. And I think you should get appreciated a bit of, with... I mean, we're, we're saving so much cost by being home, sitting and being... and having that 24-7 mm. on-the-go job. That, and, in the, and I feel like a mother would do it better than um, anyone else would, you know? 
So I think that's something I strongly really believe. I don't, um, it, it's, I, I think it's just taken away. Like in this day and age, everything's about money, and and uh, I just I think, think a bit of appreciation just, is always nice. But, Not just money, but no, I get a bit the appreciation. And... But then it's like if you have a dog, and you look after your dog, and you're taking him for walks, do you get paid for that? Like it's it's bringing it into a whole other realm that I don't feel comfortable yeah. with. Okay. In general, not just the child though. It's the, it's the whole. I know. You know what I mean? We're gonna we're gonna have to leave that game. Thing. Now, the second nominee, which I'm sure will surprise absolutely no one, is the communist and verified snivelling shit weasel, Sadiq Khan. This incompetent fuck pig that likes to label anyone who disagrees with him a fascist, whose only achievement to date is completely getting shit on by the god emperor and soy boy destroyer, President Donald Trump, before he'd even managed to land in the UK. I mean, Trump was dropping bombs all over this little mug from the air. Someone should have sounded the fucking air raid sirens. Very much carry so as President Trump landed in the UK, he decided to tweet this about the Mayor of London. Sadiq Khan has done a terrible job as Mayor of London, has been foolishly nasty to the visiting President of the United States, by far the most important ally of the United Kingdom. He's a stone-cold loser who should focus on crime in London, not me. And he then went on to insult his height. Now that all comes after Sadiq Khan criticised the President, describing him as a 20th century fascist. This aerial bombardment was in response to the article this big-nosed ferret had wrote for the Tim Pot newspaper The Observer, where he labelled the US President, the Brexit Party and both sets of supporters 1930s fascists. He then confirmed his hypocrisy and exactly the kind of fuck pig this idiot is in his subsequent interviews. He actually calls Donald Trump childish for mocking him on Twitter about his piss-poor record as London Mayor and the inescapable truth that he's a short-ass stone-cold loser. All this bearing in mind that he started the fight, so yeah, definitely a worthy nomination for Shit Weasel of the Week. Now let's check out his highlights this week, earning him this most prestigious nomination. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister President Trump. Beth Rigby from Sky News. Um, for you, President Trump, as you hold talks with the current Prime Minister, the leader of Her Majesty's opposition has been addressing a protest rally against your visit in Trafalgar Square. He says he's disappointed you attacked the London mayor and he criticised your record on refugees. What do you have to say to him? And is this man someone you could do a trade deal with? And to you, Prime Minister, do you think that Sadiq Khan is a stone-cold loser? Thank you. You're talking about the mayor of London. Is that who you said? Yes. Well, I think he's been a uh, not very good mayor, from what I understand. He's done a poor job. Crime is up. A lot of problems. And I don't think he should be criticizing uh, a representative of the United States that can do so much good for the United Kingdom. Uh, we talked about it before. He should be positive, not negative. He's a negative force, not a positive force. And if you look at what he said, he hurts the people of this great country. And I think he should actually focus on his job. It'd be a lot better if he did that. He could straighten out some of the problems that he has and probably some of the problems that he's caused. Thank you. Go next. You, of course, as well, have been attacked on social media for referring to, to Donald Trump in these terms. I mean, do, do you think it's useful to take him on in these spats, if I can call them that, between you on social media? Is that a way, the best way, the most effective way of getting your message across, do you think, and your opposition uh, to what he stands for? Well, I, I'm a bit surprised that the president of the USA would, frankly speaking, behave like an 11-year-old and resort to name-calling. If he wants to have a discussion, and I'd welcome a discussion, but... Do you regret, though, in any sense, saying that Donald Trump was akin to a, a 20th century fascist, which is the phrase that many people have objected to? When you look at the far-right playbook that's being used around the world now, that, by the way, Donald Trump's former campaign manager is teaching uh, fringe groups to do to become mainstream. You go to Hungary, you go to Italy, you go to France, you go to this country. Many of these far-right groups are now mainstream because Donald Trump's given them sucker. And history tells us that actually what these people do is they try and divide communities, they pick on minority communities, they pick on marginalized communities, they scapegoat them, 
and they stoke up fears and I think they should be called out and one of the jobs I have as the Mayor of London, the greatest city in the world where we see diversity as a strength is to stand up for our values and when our best friend who we love, uh, their leader is saying things we disagree with, say to them, listen we think you're wrong and we think you should realise that actually you're giving sucker and comfort and mainstreaming these... The third contender for the title of Shit Weasel of the Week is none other than the Bias Broadcasting Corporation for their clear and obvious hatred for the visiting President Donald Trump, showing no respect for the man, the office or the people of America, for his entire visit or leading up to it. I mean, the BBC promoted protests against him while completely ignoring any that supported him. They allowed the pathetic Trump balloon to be paraded on the venereal disease show. Oh, sorry, I mean the Victoria Derbyshire programme. And in general, gave around 95% negative coverage of his visit. They paid guests with a clear and obvious bias against the president to give their unwanted opinions when people just wanted honest news about his visit to our country, which was made at the request of our Queen, let's not forget. We also had the Newsnight host saying the president has to travel around everywhere in a helicopter because he is not at all liked here. And then to top it off, on Friday's Newswatch, when viewers called them out for their biased reporting and disgracefully allowing the Trump balloon on the TV, the snivelling toads they got to answer these questions was the news editor who completely denied every valid claim made by the viewers because obviously he did not want to admit his Trump derangement syndrome. Now let's watch some of the highlights from the BBC that got them nominated. President Trump landed in the UK. He decided to tweet this about the Mayor of London. Sadiq Khan has done a terrible job as Mayor of London, has been foolishly nasty to the visiting President of the United States, by far the most important ally of the United Kingdom. He's a stone-cold loser who should focus on crime in London, not me. And he then went on to insult his height. Now, that all comes after Sadiq Khan criticised the president, describing him as a 20th century fascist. The mayor of London has just described President Trump's latest tweet as childish insults. Mr Trump arrived an hour ago and he is accompanied by his wife, Melania. His children and their families will also be joining him for part of the three-day trip, which comes ahead of a visit to France to mark the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Protests, as you know, are planned across the UK while he's here. Tomorrow, an even bigger version of this giant inflatable mocking the US president is due to fly over London. Although President Trump's trip to the UK passed off without the major row or embarrassment that some had predicted, it was, to the surprise of no one, not free of controversy. So to the BBC's coverage of the visit, starting just an hour after Air Force One landed on Monday morning with this spectacle in the Victoria Derbyshire Show studio. Protests, as you know, are planned across the UK while he's here tomorrow. An even bigger version of this giant inflatable mocking the US president is due to fly over London. But the presence of that inflatable offended a number of viewers, including David Parry. I was very disappointed when I tuned into the Victoria Derbyshire programme to see that on Monday she had a blimp of the President of the United States, uh, Donald Trump, uh, in the studio. I felt this was totally out of character and didn't bode well for the BBC's reputation for being unbiased. Well, with me now to discuss this is news editor James Stevenson. A lot of issues raised. Let's go through some of the specific complaints then. The mini blimp in the Victoria Derbyshire studio, was that disrespectful? No, I don't think it was disrespectful. It was an item, uh, for those of your viewers who saw the item, about the protests. We knew protests were going to be a feature of the visit. The, the item featured someone who was organising the protester and protests and had brought that uh, mini blimp with them and someone who was a supporter of Donald Trump in the studio. So. It was an item about that, and that was part of the production of that item. Our fourth nominee is, of course, Commissar Korbinov, leader of the Labour Party, the UK's very own Communist Party. This snivelling shit weasel thought it would be a good idea to publicly boycott the state banquet, not only disrespecting the President, but also the Queen who invited him, showing what an egotistical prick he is to then go on and lead the failed protests against Donald Trump, which completely shit the bed with a small turnout turning up to actually protest despite the Labour, Lib Dem Ramonas and the media promoting it constantly. He continued his shit show of a week by requesting a secret meeting with Donald Trump, despite leading protests and screaming like a wild animal from the stage, forcing Trump to expose him as a liar by revealing the fact Corbyn had asked for a secret meeting and Trump had rejected him, calling him a negative force at the press conference. Now let's check out some of Corbyn Ops highlights.
Secretary. Yes, he wanted to meet with me, and I told him no. Yes. Well, I don't know Jeremy Corbyn. Never met him. Never spoke to him. He wanted to meet today or tomorrow, and I, I decided that I would not do that. Uh, I think that he is, from where I come from, somewhat of a negative force. I think that uh, people should look to do things correctly as opposed to criticize. I really don't like critics as much as I like and respect people that get things done. So I've decided not to meet. As far as the protests, I have to tell you, because I commented on it yesterday, uh, we left the Prime Minister, the Queen, the royal family. There were thousands of people on the streets cheering. And even coming over today, there were thousands of people cheering. And then I heard that there were protests. I said, where are the protests? I don't see any protests. I did see a small protest today when I came, very small. So a lot of it is fake news, I hate to say. But you saw the, the people waving the American flag, waving your flag. It was tremendous spirit and love. There was great love. It was an alliance. And I didn't see the protesters until just a little while ago, and it was a very, very small group of people put in for political reasons. So it was fake news. Thank you. The fifth and final nominee for Shit Weasel of the Week is the nerdy little soy boy audience member who made a pathetic attempt to label Trump a racist, misogynist, and made the false claim that Donald Trump kills children, while pretending to speak for veterans of D-Day on how they wouldn't like Trump, when in actual fact I'm sure the D-Day vets would be disgusted with people like him calling everyone fascists when they fought and died protecting us from actual fascists. So let's take a look at his statement earning him this prestigious nomination. Piers Morgan talks um, brought up about D-Day there, and I've seen a lot on social media about people saying it's disrespectful to the memory of those who fought on D-Day to protest in that manner. Um, what I would say is actually more disrespectful to the memories of the people who fought on D-Day is to not protest and simply wave out a red carpet for a racist who a misogynist Rubbish. who is allowing people Rubbish. who is allowing True. children to die in immigrant Rubbish. camps yeah. on his watch True. you know you talk about human rights where's the human rights for those who are dying in the immigrant <laughs> camps he's setting up when you say they're court. dying you talk about children being separated from their parents i think i think that's what you're talking about so there is our five nominees for the first ever shit weasel of the week. Number one, we had Amir Khan's wife, Fariel Makdoom, for her stupid 100 grand a week appearance on the ITV show Good Morning. Number two, we had Sadiq Khan, London mayor and verified shit weasel for getting wrecked by Donald Trump. Then we have the taxpayer funded British broadcaster, the BBC, for their biased reporting and general shit weasel behaviour. We also have Commissar Korbinov, also known as Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour Party leader, who, as the Marxist that he is, has made many, many fuck-ups this week, including reje rejecting the banquet, asking for a secret meeting, getting rejected, leading protests that failed, much like him. So he earned his place very well, I find. And then finally, we had the nerdy soy boy from the Newsnight show who decided to get up and make various wild claims about Donald Trump that had no evidence, even though he was heckled by the crowd. So that's all of our nominees for this week. I would like to thank all of the entries. The competition was a tough one with some true shit weasel behaviour from every single one of them. But the winner of the first ever Shit Weasel of the Week award and the ultimate shit weasel goes to... Sadiq Khan. Now Sadiq Khan wins that by a clear distance, showing his true snivelling shit weasel nature by picking a fight in a shit kicker newspaper to then get destroyed by President Trump, who humiliated him on Twitter for the world to see. Khan jumped straight on the telly, played the victim card claiming that Donald Trump is being childish, attacking him, conveniently missing out the fact that he had called Donald Trump a 1930s and 40s fascist. He used the Trump visit to try and get some press while attempting to play down his inflammatory words and play the oppressed victim that we all know he loves to play, getting bullied by the big bad Donald Trump. So, Sadiq Khan, it is with great pleasure I bestow this likely unwanted award upon you. So, Sadiq Khan, congratulations. You are the first ever shit weasel of the week. Wear it with pride as you continue to ruin our capital city, you useless fuckpig. <laughs>